Hi, welcome to Straight Talk. As you know, for the last couple of years, we've been dedicated to try to educate the public about the problem of opiate heroin addiction and try to teach you as much as we can about the illness, the disease, the problem, the solutions. And one of the things that we really wanted to educate the public about is how do we help people? And one of the things that we want to talk about today is the whole process of detoxification. You hear the buzzword, you hear someone's going in for detox, to detox, and we're going to learn what that is and how that works on the body and the mind. And we're really excited because I think it's a missing piece of what people need to know. So we hope that you can learn a lot about you know, what we're trying to tell you about addiction and try to help some people or help yourself if you need it. So let's get started. Uh, we're, we're so happy to have some people here from uh, Maryland Detoxification, uh, Maryland House Detox in, in the state of Maryland. And they're part of the Delphi Behavioral Health Group. And joining me is the medical director of the Delphi Behavioral Group, and it's uh, Dr. Neeraj Gandotra. Gandotra, sir. Gandotra. I want to make sure we get it right. Welcome, doctor. Thank you. Good to Thank have you. You, uh, you certainly are mm -hmm. in the front lines now of what we're seeing in this country when we talk about the opiate epidemic. And we talk a lot about detox, and it's kind of a buzzword that I think people mm -hmm. hear, but they don't quite know what does that mean. Everyone says, well, when you get off of heroin, you go through detox. Let's talk generally first about what is detox. So when someone takes something regularly, and in this case we're talking about a psychoactive addiction, addictive substance, the body and brain get used to it being around. Tolerance develops, dependence develops, where they have to take more and more just to feel normal. So when we talk about detox, it's the reduction and removal of that psychoactive substance. And what happens is the body and brain respond in a negative way when that substance is withdrawn. So to do a comfortable detox, we sometimes have to administer medications to make that process a little less violent because the brain and the body are going to exhibit violence when that substance is withdrawn. That can be in the terms of cravings, it could be in terms of physical symptoms. In the case of opiates in particular, detox would involve very negative symptoms of runny nose, cramping, diarrhea, vomiting, elevated blood pressure, elevated heart rate, irregular temperature control, all sorts of things that would make you feel pretty miserable. So detox means that we're going to try to, as comfortably as possible, remove that substance from that person's life. But the brain and the body are going to need to have some accommodation during that process. And that when we talk about that process of, of addiction and, as you say, that desire to want to keep using, mm -hmm. that withdrawal that you, that you describe, I mean, it sounds pretty painful when you're going through it if you're an addict. Does that drive them back to the heroin? It Is can. that part of, like, when they try to, if they try to do it, say, on their own, and, they, and they're having these cramps, and they're vomiting, and they're sick, and is that what forces it, makes them go back? So that's part of the picture, is that they have a memory of feeling better. Mm -hmm. And they have a process at which they could feel better. And the idea that they have to go through now some, not just sacrifice, but real pain to get to the other side, that requires some long thinking, some forward thinking that at that moment when they are in distress, they're just thinking emotionally. In particular, the compulsion of using is so strong that they automatically know all they have to do is make a phone call, go out, and then they'll feel better rather than going through five, seven, ten days of real discomfort. So there's your compulsion. Absolutely. <laughs> there it is. Mm -hmm. and, I, and, and we probably see that often with addicts who want to get well, want to get clean, but they go through that withdrawal and they go, like you said, 
pick up that phone. And, and allow me to extrapolate a little bit further. Mm -hmm. There are actually brain changes that occur, neurochemical changes that occur to the area of the brain called the thalamus, where the compulsion drive is actually where it resides. That when that substance is repeatedly administered, then it, the, pay, the person is no longer taking that substance to feel good. Now they're just taking it to feel normal because the brain has adapted. So once that substance starts to be reduced or withdrawn completely, now the brain isn't functioning the same way. And the idea that they are going to have to do it on their own, a lot of people are not ready for right, that. Right. So for you, you were talking about some people could do it on the, at home mm -hmm. or they would do it in a facility. To do it at home, you said they might get some medications. What would those medications do? So for opiates in particular, the idea would be that we would treat the symptoms. The runny nose, the cramping, they're over-the-counter medications that could be given for mm -hmm. those things. Difficulty sleeping. Of course, you know, things like, uh, and I don't want anyone to take this as to do it on their own without medical advice. Right. But there are over-the-counter medications that could be given to sort of provide little parachutes so they don't crash so hard. But in contrast, detox from alcohol can be life-threatening. Right. And the risk of what we call grand mal seizures is so great when someone has been drinking heavily for an extended period of time that that needs to be medically supervised. And that there needs to be medications given that actually allow the brain to go stepwise down from that level of dependence. So your recommendation, if someone said, I'm, I'm addicted to painkillers, I'm addicted to opiates, mm -hmm. and, I need to, and I really want to get off, your recommendation would be to do what? Well, first of all, talk to a professional to assess what level of dependence they have and what the right setting for that should be. A lot of cases, it may be an inpatient setting. In some cases, for those individuals that maybe haven't been using as long or as heavy, maybe an outpatient setting might be appropriate. I would say, though, if you've developed dependence where you need to take it every day, or you feel bad, you probably need an inpatient You're setting. You're going to need medical, some medical support. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, doctor, thanks for getting us started. We're okay. going to have you back okay. a little bit in the, in the next other segment so we can keep talking about this, because I really want the public to understand what detox is and how important it is to get on the right track mm -hmm. to get yourself some help. So thank you. Thank you for getting very much. Us started. Thank you. When we come back to Straight Talk, we're going to hear about what's the process. If you want to go into a detox treatment, how do you do it? What happens? What can you expect? So stay with us. We're coming right back to Straight Talk. Why is Connor having trouble focusing in school? Having trouble finding Connor's middle school? Would you like directions? No. Why is Connor having trouble focusing in school? Finding lowest airfare to Istanbul. No, I'm, I'm tired of fighting with him over homework. Home, walk, restaurant, need a review? No, I need help. He's very smart, but his mind it wanders. He's disorganized. I think I understand. Oh, good. French fries, finding best potatoes. No! Russet, fingerling, you can't go. Why don't you understand me? Sorry, I was trying to show how Connor feels every day. Frustrating, isn't it? Redirecting to understood.org. For the one in five kids with learning and attention issues, this is what life can feel like. ExploreUnderstood.org, a free online resource about learning and attention issues designed to help your child thrive in school and in life. Understood.org, because understanding is everything. So they say it's a man's world? see anybody's name on it. While well, they were out doing their thing, we slowly changed all that. We changed all that! Today, women can do anything men can do. And there's one thing we're even better at.
Hi, welcome back to Straight Talk. We're talking about detoxification from heroin and opiates. It's something that happens every time someone tries to stop. Some people handle it in different ways. And what we're trying to do is to educate you about what are the options that are out there, how do they work, what works the best. Because again, the, the first step of, of any recovery of treatment is going through detox. And we're seeing a lot more services than we did before. And we're really happy to have a good friend back with us, uh, Scott Doherty, who's now executive director of the Maryland House of Detox. Scott, welcome back. Thank you. You've been here before and helped yes. us a million times, and we're really glad that you're here glad to, to help here. us. What I wanted to do is to kind of go through the process. When someone wants to get off of heroin and they call Maryland House Detox, mm -hmm. how do you get them in? And then let's talk about the process, how long they stay, what happens, so people can kind of understand that, that early process of detox sure. as we talk about it. Sure. So. Uh, you know, that's really why we're, we're here uh, in the state of Maryland, because prior to Maryland House Detox, there really was this kind of log jam with access to care. Mm -hmm. So we have this huge epidemic, and uh, as you well know, more than most, uh, this is not a new epidemic. This has been going on for 40 years. But we have this epidemic, and we have all this need, but we have very few resources. And to get into the treatment system, um, you have to go to an ER, have to go uh, to residential treatment, and if you need this medical care, it can be very difficult to get to one of those services. So Maryland House Detox came, and we offer 16 beds, and they will call uh, our call center, and they'll be screened to see if they meet the criteria uh, for it's really just a need for detox and a, and a willingness to, to go through this process. And we can get folks in, you know, 24 hours uh, would, would be a long time. Uh, we had someone today who called up and, and she was at our facility uh, within 90 minutes. Um, and she's there now. Terrific. And so we are providing an access point into the treatment system. Uh, so, so one thing that, that is very clear is while detox is an important part of the process, it is not the process. So, so this is the beginning of this journey of recovery. And so someone comes in and they are assessed uh, medically and clinically and whatever their needs are uh, medication-wise, um, whatever, you know, they may have some... Uh, paperwork for work or, or legal issues or any of those things will will help with all that. Um, but what's important and, and one of our, our basic philosophies is that that is an individual, right? That is an individual with their own life story. And that life story is going to dictate that treatment plan. That is not just someone who is using X X number uh, bags of heroin for X number of years, and they go on some formulary of right. detox meds, and then that means they're there for a certain amount of days. If we were to do that, we might add to the epidemic rather than, than subtract from it. So, so that's a person, and, and that person's in there. Um, but, but there's some decisions that have been made, and this, this highly addictive substance has taken over. And so we take everything into account. Um, are they going to need uh, medication-assisted treatment? Are they going to need residential care afterwards? Are they going to need trauma-informed care? Are they going to need ongoing family therapy? You know, what is that this person is going to need? And because we have 16 beds, we have the luxury of doing that. You know, this is very manageable. So they will be there on an average of five to seven days for this process. Uh, but if they come in on something like a, a benzodiazepine and they've been taking, um, you know, Valium or Xanax uh, for a number of years, it, it could be significantly mm. longer than that, which is fine. We, we'll, we'll take them for longer, uh, whatever their needs are. Um, and then the clinical part of the program, because it's, it's a medical program, it's a detox, but clinically we are going to focus on where are you going next? What is the next level of care? 
because that's really uh, the, the heart of, of what is needed. Once we get this substance out of your system, you're going to feel better, but you are not going to be better, and you're going to think you are. Right. Uh, and that's just the most because they're through that detox part where they're not feeling so miserable physically, right? But mentally, they still have a. It's Absolutely. just the beginning. It's, it's, just, it's, the beginning. it's just the beginning, but. The, the addicted brain says, we're good, we're, we're all better. Let's, let's go, let's get back to work, let's get back to my family, they must miss me terribly. You know, let, yeah, let's, thank you, yeah, see you later. Yeah, let's get right. back to life. <laughs> and, and, and that's the addiction talking, saying yes, let's, let's come back. Um, so there's a lot more treatment that's needed. And so clinically that is our focus. Where are you going next? So you must have to start that immediately. Day let one. them know, like, hey, Day you're going to feel better, yes. you're going to want to run, Yes. you're going to want to run back home or wherever thinking you're cured, Right. but you're not, you're and we got to talk about that next phase. Right, you, you are, you know, if we go, you know, from the 12-step literature, you know, we have this threefold illness, um, you know, uh, mental, uh, physical, and spiritual, and we've taken care of, of one third of that. So, so there's actually a majority right. of the illness still active. And not only is it active, it may be getting stronger because you know, the, the, the mental obsession and, and uh, these, you know, what your emotions are, are kind of running with, that's gonna continue to grow whether you're using or not. And is that what you're seeing? I mean, oh, being absolutely. open now for a while and you're, you're, seeing, you're seeing them get to that point where Okay, now physically they're feeling a little better, so now it's like on the bubble. Which way it's, are they going to go? Are they going to go for more help or are they going to run? Right. It's, that's got to be a big challenge for your staff. Well, it, it's, <laughs> well, that's why, you know, we are not taking a deep dive on family of origin issues, on uh, we're not doing psychodramas, we're, we're not doing this wide breadth of clinical exposure. It is really simply where are you going next what are you going to do and that's where the group dynamic helps you know because yeah. a lot of these folks they've been to treatment maybe dozens of times and and you know some of these folks have been have been clean and sober previously five ten years yeah. so they know what it can be like so so that group dynamic helps us out we're, yeah. we're not doing this alone yeah it's great um i want you to stay here we're going to yep. go to the next segment and bring the doctor back but it just sounds like this is an, it's filling in a, a huge need. Because yep. again, if you can't get that first step, you're not, you're not gonna get to the next level. Right. And that's what's so important about having detox and you guys are doing great work. So hang in there, we're gonna do another segment because I think the public needs to hear more. So thank you. But we come back to Straight Talk, we're gonna continue talking about detoxifying off of heroin and opiates, what that feels like, and then what, and then what happens next? What's the next step? So stay with us. We're coming right back to Straight Talk. Your daughter just had her first breakup. Do you A, put yourself in her shoes? <laughs> B, console her? Don't worry, sweetie. This is gonna happen a lot. Or C, find her a new boyfriend. Nice, single boys. <laughs> that was weird. As a parent, there are no perfect answers. But you don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. It's a short ride from your neighborhood to your naturehood. Find fun activities to do, like boating and biking, or camping and hiking, plus much more. To find a neighborhood park or green space near you, visit discovertheforest.org. 
Don't allow your weight to threaten your health or control your future. Excess weight or obesity can cause emotional and physical health risks, but you can take control. The Your Weight Matters campaign offers free resources and tips to help you measure and understand your weight. Take the Your Weight Matters Challenge. The free toolkit prepares you to speak with a healthcare provider about your weight. Your weight does matter. Take the challenge and take control today. Hi, welcome back to Straight Talk. We're having a really educational conversation about opiates, heroin, detoxification, treatment. What's the first step? And we're joined by some really great experts who are with us, Scott Doherty from who's executive director of Maryland House Detox. That's the right name of the That's program. That's the name. Uh, and Dr. Niraj Gondotra, who's the chief medical officer at Delphi Behavior Health Group. And I'm sure I keep getting your last name wrong. Oh, that's but right. I'm trying <laughs> very hard. Thank you guys for staying with us. You know, we, we've got, I think we've got the audience to the point where they understand a little more about the disease, about addiction, about getting help and, and what they can expect. But there's a lot of other dynamics that go with it. Scott, you yeah. talked about your job is to prepare them for that next phase. Mm -hmm. What's the next phase? So the, again, the next phase depends on the individual. So it's another reason why uh, Delphi chose Maryland House Detox to, to be our first footprint here, because look, not everyone needs one treatment model one level of care. There, there's, there's different needs for different people. So depending on the assessment, is it going to be what level of care, what treatment provider they're going to need. Some people will come in, they'll complete their detox with us, and they may need a residential level of care. They may need a 28-day stay somewhere. Uh, some people may need uh, medication assistant treatment. Uh, some folks may need intensive outpatient. Um, or outpatient. You know, if someone has, uh, you know, a single parent, they're working, they have to take care of the family, then it, it wouldn't make sense to, to send them to a residential treatment. So it really depends on that individual but where they're going to go next. What's really important is they go somewhere next that is clinically indicated. Right, right. Doctor, explain, you talked earlier in the early segment about the chemistry, the brain chemistry. Now they go through that detox period. How long, is it, how long will it take for that brain <laughs> to begin to clean itself out? You, you can, phys as Scott was saying, physically you can get the person to a certain mm -hmm. level. But what about the other part? Because that, that drive to, to, to relapse, mm -hmm. that drive to keep using, seems to be so strong with addicts. So it's a complicated answer yeah. because everyone's different. But in terms of the neurochemicals, at least 30 days from the last use before the neurochemical levels of dopamine, serotonin, get back to where they were prior to use. Hmm. However, the pathways for frustration tolerance, for decision making, uh, foregoing gratification, long-term planning, all of those things that have been modified by continued drug use in a negative way that pathway of reworking usually takes at least nine to twelve months in most individuals and the science behind this we describe it sort of as plastic that once that plastic gets bent to bend it back requires sustained pressure for some period of time but it's not always the same as it once was there's always some mark so to speak so some vulnerability will always persist and that's where you guys have to make that determination that goes into the client, yeah. the patient when they leave, what's gonna be the best for them. Some are highly motivated, some may have family support, as you say, and some, and some as you said, may go on medication. What's important is that treatment continues. Right. What we know is that patients that have engaged in treatment will do better than patients who aren't engaged in treatment. What level of treatment that is may be variable. However, treatment-seeking behavior is exhibited in any patient that's currently in treatment. Mm -hmm. Someone who's in treatment, even in medication-assisted treatment mm -hmm. or outpatient treatment, 
will be likely to engage in other treatment seeking behaviors like go to the dentist, maintain their primary care appointments, get their flu shots, practice healthier eating. All of those things are more likely to occur when they're in treatment than when they're out. So the key here is, is, is for you to set them up to stay in treatment as long as possible, whatever that's going to Whatever. fit in. Right. How do you work with the families at uh, Maryland Detox? So we have a very short period of time. Right. Um, so oftentimes it's, it's, look, this is a crisis for, for the families. Um, they don't know what's happening. Um, the, the person in treatment isn't always the best uh, person to let them know what's happening because they're, they're physically ill, they're not, they're not feeling well, so they may not want to be on the phone or they may want to get on the phone to say, uh, get me out of here. Um, so um, now th they can certainly use the phone I if they need to, but often our job is just let the, let the family know, look, they're safe. Uh, they're, they're the safest they've been in a long time. They're being, uh, they're, they're doing well. They're, they're being medically monitored. Um, and here's how we all can best help your loved one. Uh, what would you like to see happen? You know, are they, are they welcome back home? Do they still have this job? Uh, are they financially supported? Um, what is, what is your input about what level of care they should go to? So getting some information from the family, checking on the assessment information that we receive from the client to make sure that, that it matches up because the family knows this person much longer and, and that, better than that, we do. And, that's, and family's important. And, oh, it's, you know, it's Family's crucial. really important. Uh, yeah. Community data. support, uh, whether it's a family member, a friend, the treatment facility, or uh, whether it's outpatient, inpatient, needs an ally, someone that they can relate to to s notify when the patient's doing well and when the patient's not doing well. Someone in the community that can notify the treatment program that the patient's... And, and that's important. Mm -hmm. You guys are amazing. We could talk for hours about yeah. this and I appreciate this so much. I appreciate Delphi Behavioral Health letting you guys do this. You know, we can't thank them enough. I want to thank you so much. This is a good mm -hmm. start. Hopefully all of you at home are learning about detox, learning about treatment, watching our shows to kind of learn about this epidemic, but that there's help and we can help people. And it's important that you take that first step and detox might just be that first step for a lot of people. So give them a call, let them know if you need help or even in your own community, your own city. I wanna thank our guests. Thank you for watching Straight Talk and we will see you next time.